Hey guys, in this video, um, we're going to be discussing how to have a have your character shoot a projectile in Unity 3D. We have done this similarly in 2D, but in this case we're doing it in 3D, and it's going to be a similar process. Um, let's break it down into how you might go about doing this. As always, we're going to approach it in in describing the the task that we want to do in regular English. In this case, we want to shoot a projectile that spawns when the user presses a button. And that's something that any uh, person could understand. And now let's try to break it down into something that we have to start thinking about what Unity has to know when we do this task. And uh, when we say a projectile that spawns when the user presses a button, I like to highlight the portions that really matter in the process. And so I've capitalized pro sp projectile spawn when user presses a button. And so breaking it down even further, then we can say, what does it have to do with a projectile? It's a prefab object with its own movement script attached to it. And we're trying to make a cannonball or a bullet, something that moves through space, right? And so this object is going to be a prefab that we can use the instantiate method to call a new instance of it when a user presses a button and that's going to be related to the input class that we've done before. And so in this video we're going to look at these three parts to give you the ability to create a projectile when you press a button that's going to travel through space. Okay, So let's, uh, I'm going to go into Uni and start this process. So in this scene, this is um, a scene that we've been working on in class where uh, we have the user, where am I, uh, I want to get in the scene, where we have our main character on the scene and we want a projectile to shoot from him and then that projectile is going to move around. So let's go and create an object that's going to be our projectile. And we started this task in, in class, but I'm going to start from scratch here. I'm going to make a, a 3D object, it's going to be a sphere. Um, and it's right now in the same position as my character, so I'm just going to move it out. Move it this way. Oop, not that way. This way. So it's out in front of me, and it's a sphere, and there's certain elements that we know that we need to have, right? We need to have a rigid body. That way we know, or it knows when it interacts with other objects, and we need to give it a collider. Collider is the boundaries of detection when it interacts with things, and so it's going to be a sphere collider. Okay, so I have the two main important things, and I'm going to say that it doesn't use gravity, and it's going to be as kinematic. Now I want to give it a material just so it has a color. I'm going to make it blue. Great. So there's our there's our bullet. It's maybe the size that I want. And the next thing that I want to do, if we go back to that list, is that our projectile is going to be a prefab object with its own movement script. So let's first make it a prefab. I'm going to take this sphere, I'm going to name it projectile. And then I'm going to drag it into my prefabs folder. There it is. Okay. And now let's attach a new script that's going to have it move around. And this is a script that we had started in class. And so I'll just pull it up. We didn't finish it, but now that I have it, you can look at it. I've called it projectile move. And there's only two main parts to it, right? There's nothing that really needs to happen at start but we need it to be constantly moving. So as soon as it gets instantiated or spawned, we want it to start moving. And we're going to use the transform.translate method, which is basically saying whatever way it's facing forward, we want it to move at a certain speed. And re remember we said time.delta time is a way to keep this movement consistent across different frame rates, or essentially different types of machines that may be having different frame rates. And so Having this in here is going to keep uh, anyone's version of this game to be consistent. No. And then um, 
we're going to set the speed value here which is good since we make it public we're going to be able to change that inside the inspector so let's take that script I'll go back to it so you can look at it so you can pause and write this down these are the only two lines that you need and we're going to attach that to the projectile drag it in the projectile see that it's on there and then I'm going to set a, a certain speed I'm going to say it's 1.5 and make sure that you hit apply that way it gets that affects um, all of the prefabs so now that's there let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit I'm going to hit play and hopefully this ball will start moving a certain direction there it goes great I'll get out so now that it's there we can go back to prefabs just to check if everything's as we expect so that object should be living in our prefabs folder whenever we want to spawn a new one it's gonna come from this version right there it has the projectile move script on there and the speed that we set Great. so now the next task we am gonna drag our order of things here we want to have we want to write the spawning script or the instantiation script here so every time that we press a button we want a new version of 2 appear on, on the scene we're going to go back to our character and we're going to write a new script um, I have a version of it right here I'm going to remove that I'm going to write our new one so here that we're going to go write a new script and we're going to call this uh, shoot Double click on that. Make sure that the name of the class matches the name of the file. And um, let's talk about what are the things that are important for this um, script to work. We said that we need to have an input class, or use the input class to say that when the user presses a certain button, that this thing instantiates. And we need to list a couple more things beyond that. When we're using the instantiation class, there are a few things that we need to understand, or Unity needs to understand. It needs to understand where, which prefab we're actually using. Which prefab. Secondly, we need to know the position that this prefab is going to spawn from. Position to spawn to. And then the rotation of the new new instance. Those are the three parameters that the instantiate method needs. So those are the things that we're gonna most likely gonna have to create a variable for. So why don't we start doing that? We need to create the prefab or a variable. To reference that prefab, so we're going to go public game object, capital G game object, and we're going to name this the projectile prefab. And we're going to use this variable to be able to drag in that projectile that we uh, object that we made, and that that way we're going to be able to link it up later to the specific um, instance or the instantiator. Secondly, we're going to have to make another game object variable. I'm going to call this the projectile instance. And that's going to be, uh, that's going to allow us to link this variable to whenever we want to make a change to that um, instance of the prefab when we instantiate it. Lastly, we need, nope, we don't need to do that. We're going to go into our update, and then we're going to write the code that says when the user presses a button, we want it to shoot, right? And so we're going to do this in the update, and that's where we normally put our input, our player input code. We're going to say that if, when that player presses a button, we're going to say input dot get key down whenever that user presses the key down and then we need to say which key we're going to say key code 
dot. In this case, um, I'm using the spacebar for jump, so I'm going to use a different button. Let's say that's Q. You can pick another button if you want to. Close that, and then close off the if statement. Open and close squiggly brackets, and then within these squiggly brackets is where we, the good stuff happens when we use the instantiation code. And we're going to use, use instantiate. Once we write these parentheses, then it's going to tell us, oh, we need to have an original object, an existing object that you want to make a copy of, and that's going to be the projectile prefab that we wrote a variable for. So the first parameter is there. The second one is we need to know the transform or the position that we want this guy to appear at. We're going to say that we want this bullet to be uh, spawning right at the same position of our character. So we're going to write transform dot position. And then lastly, it needs to know the rotation. So um, our character is looking a certain direction when we play this game, right? I can't give you an example because this code is in the middle of writing. But let's say that we rotate and we're looking a certain way. We want the bullet to be traveling the same direction that we look as soon as we fire. And then we can look a different way, and when we fire again, that bullet's going to be looking, it's going to be moving in the direction that we currently are facing. So we need to say our rotation is going to be based on the, the position of the shooter when they fire. And that's going to be our transform. Dot rotation. So when we write both of these transform dot position, it's the same thing as writing the lowercase g game object. It's saying this is the object that this script is attached to. We're using its transform position, and then we're using its transform rotation. And should be it. Let's save and build. The next thing that we need to do is we need to link up the prefab that we made with this variable and we can do that inside the editor. Let's go back to our character, click on that and see if our script is there. So now it's asking for the projectile prefab and right now it's empty. So we can go and drag either from here or in our prefabs folder. We do it from here, drag it in there. That's the projectile. So whenever we hit Q now, it should be able to spawn our object. There it is. You'll notice that like my, my character jumps a little bit when I hit the Q button. Why? Because both our character and the um, bullet itself has a rigid body and so they're occupying the same space. We want to be able to have our bullet show up a little bit in front of it. So how do we do that? We're going to go back into here and we're going to create a, an offset variable <clears throat> an offset variable that's going to put it in front of here. We're going to we need to know where our current position is, and we're going to add a little bit of something so that when the bullet appears, it's not in the same physical space as our character, but just a little bit in front of it. And that, that difference right there is the offset that we're going to be able to adjust. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new um, public float value, and we're going to name that offset. I'm going to put some comments here just so we understand it. If we come back to it, we'll understand what it, what it means. A distance as a multiplier, as a multi, multiple, this will make sense in a second, in front of shooter, which the prefab will spawn. Okay. So we're going to be able to adjust this and most likely it's going to be a value between 1 and 2 because we don't want it too far away from our character. And then we need to incorporate this value into the position factor of our instantiate code. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to take our current position and we're going to add a value to it. And we only want to add it to um, the space in front of our character. And we're going to use the transform dot forward. If we type out forward, you'll see what Unity is thinking about. Transform dot forward. We highlight here it says 
is the axis in, in world space. It's basically the area in front of our character. We can use other ones. We can say something like up and down, but we were only thinking about something in front of our character, so we're just going to use this factor. And then we're going to multiply that by our offset. So we're taking our current position and then we're going to add a multiply a certain value in front of our character and that's going to be the new position of the object that we instantiate. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to come in game um, and split the scene so we can see both the game and object. So I'm going to keep this scene here like this. This is going to be the first person view inside the game, but hopefully I'm going to get rid of this guy. We'll see the the cannonballs be shot. So there's still a little bit of jerk. Why is that happening? We'll go back to our character, see what the distance is right now. Right now the offset is set at 0. Well, let's set it at 1.5. And I'm going to lower this character so he starts out closer to the ground. Character. Lower, 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 lower. Move you away from the zombie. Let's start out there. There it is. When we're, when I hit Q, then um, the projectile gets placed in front of it. And by in front, I mean the direction that we're facing just a little bit so that we're not, we're never occupying the same position. So I'll move away from my zombie, I can fire at it. And then you can write some code that's going to affect when you hit other objects, maybe the zombie. Hope this video helps. Um, if you have any questions, email me. Thanks.